It's Adam here for PC Monitors and today I'm going to be taking a look at the OSD on-screen display menu system of the ASUS PG248Q. The menu is controlled by pressable buttons at the rear of the monitor towards the right side. There's also a little joystick for navigation at the top with the remaining buttons being pressable. There are button labels at the front to correspond to the different functions of the buttons. So at the top there's the joystick which controls the um, up, down, left, right navigation in the main menu and it also can be clicked to enter. The second button down is an exit button. Then there's a game plus button which has various different Game Plus features of the monitor, such as an on-screen crosshair. There are four different designs there. You can also move it if you don't want it to be centred. Um, I know this looks a bit cruel having a crosshair on, over a wild cat. Um, that wasn't actually intentional. But uh, So yeah, you can move the um, crosshair off centre a little bit. And if you want to get rid of the crosshair, just press the exit button twice. There's also an on-screen timer function. And that displays a little countdown timer at the top there, in minutes. So you can set 30, 40, 50, 60 or 90 minutes for that. And again, if you had the timer active and you want it to just disappear, you just press the X button twice. There's also an FPS counter or so-called FPS counter. You see it's reading 144 hertz, uh, sorry, 144 frames a second at the moment. What this actually shows you is the refresh rate of the monitor um, rather than the, f the frame rate um, of the GPU specifically. So this monitor does support G-Sync and in the G-Sync operation um, within certain limits the refresh rate of the monitor will be matching the frame rate anyway, which is why they call it an FPS counter. And again, press X twice to get rid of that. There's also a, a new Game Plus feature, which I haven't seen before anyway, called Display Alignment. And this is just basically for lining up multiple um, ASUS PG248Qs or other displays of, of with the feature of similar sizes. So you can see little guidelines on the screen there to help you line them up in the multi-display setups. There's then a game visual which is the last button before the power button there. And these are various different presets um, which are explored in the review. The default racing mode I find to be optimal. And there's then the power button, which I mentioned before, which um, is quite self-explanatory what that does. There's a power light here, a little LED. It's not very obtrusive at all. Um, when the monitor is on in its normal, normal static refresh rate, uh, that glows white, as you can see here. If you activate G-Sync, um, or, or the monitors using G-Sync, I've actually got G-Sync to run in window and full screen, so even if I just... Uh, go on something like test UFO which should activate G-Sync for me so I can just show you the uh, change in colour of the power LED so you can see that's red now and that signifies that G-Sync is active and I've just turned that off so it's uh, gone again into white if you've got ULMB, ultra low motion blur active that'll be yellow, the power LED and there's another colour for 3D vision. I've got them all written down in the review. I can't remember them off the top of my head. Um, and it'll it'll flash or, or turn amber when the monitor's on standby in a low power state as well. So the main menu system, it's uh, quite nicely laid out. And because of the little joystick, the jog button, it's quite easy to navigate through. The first feature there is overclocking. As you can see at the moment, it has... Um, some basic information about the monitor up there. It says it's connected by display port. It's running at the full HD resolution at 144 hertz. 
It's also using the racing mode preset, and that's the model number. So it also says normal mode. If I was on G-Sync, it would say G-Sync mode, or if you're using ULMB. So basic information there, quite useful to just see at a glance as soon as you go into the main menu system. First up is the overclocking feature. If you turn this on, you select a maximum refresh rate. Um, I think most people will be wanting to choose 180. So you simply let the monitor restart itself. Then with any luck, you'll have 180 hertz as a selectable refresh rate um, in Windows or in the NVIDIA control panel. So I'll just open up the NVIDIA control panel for you. And you can see there's a 180 hertz as a selectable refresh rate there. And again, this is explored in detail in the review. Um, it's obviously beyond the scope of just an OSD video. I just wanted to point out that uh, feature, that's all. There's a blue light filter, low blue light settings, which will decrease the amount of blue light emitted from the monitor, which is useful before bedtime or when you're wanting some more relaxing viewing and you don't want stimulating blue light. There are various different settings, four different levels of blue light filter. Again, it's explored in the review. There's colour. Um, which allows you to change basic parameters of the image, such as the brightness, the contrast, saturation, which is only something you can change in certain presets. Um, in terms of natural image and maximum shade variety, the, the default settings, as per racing mode, are best. But I know some people like to adjust saturation, and you can do that in certain presets. There's a colour temperature setting normal, warm and cool as presets and there's also a user mode which allows you to manually configure the red, green and blue colour channels. Finally on this menu there's a gamma setting or three different gamma settings 1.8, 2.2 and 2.5 as I explored in the review um, at least on my unit they did not correspond to the actual gamma um, but it nonetheless did have an impact on the gamma and it gives you some good flexibility to change that which is nice. There is image next and that has OD or overdrive which allows you to change the intensity of the pixel overdrive the greater gray acceleration of the monitor. There's extreme normal and off as explored in the review normal is the one you want to go for there. Adaptive contrast control um, it's a dynamic contrast function you can change both the strength and the limit, and again, that's explored in the review. Just gives you a little bit of flexibility. Um, it's quite a good dynamic contrast feature, if, if as far as dynamic contrast features go. It's not something I like uh, to use on any monitor, but this is a decent implementation of it. And there's Dark Boost, which is very much um, equivalent to BenQ's Black Equalizer, which will um, skew the monitor's gamma curve so that you can see extra detail in dark areas. I'll just open up um, the Legon website so I can just show you more or less what this does. So you've got the black level tests. Um, it changes to level 1, it brightens all of these shades up and these ones become more visible for example. Level 2, a greater effect. And level 3, a greater effect again. So it's basically to give you a bit of a competitive edge in gaming um, if you want to be able to see enemies and whatnot more easily in the shadows. There's ULMB, Ultra Low Motion Blur. That's greyed out at the moment because I don't have the monitor set to the correct mode. Um, with any luck, if I change it to 120Hz, it'll remember that um, I was using ULMB on that refresh rate before and everything should activate. Um, so now you can see there's a little tick next to ULMB, and it says ULMB mode up there. And indeed the, the LED is yellow, as I've mentioned before should happen. You can change the pulse width there setting, which is explored in the review as well. I'm just going to set it back to 144Hz, and therefore disable ULMB just for the rest of this video.
as input select, which allows you to select DisplayPort or HDMI. It's quite self-explanatory again. Um, and the system setup. This allows you to change the language the OSD is displayed in, the position of the OSD on the screen. You can change the transparency level of the background for the OSD there. You can change the timeout period, which is how long the OSD will be displayed on the screen after the last button press before it automatically disappears. You can also make it manually disappear by using that little exit button there. There's a key lock feature to stop generally younger family members from fiddling with your OSD and changing all of these settings, which is quite useful. And there's some information which basically just rehashes what's already available to you there. If you press down with the joystick again, there are actually some extra settings here. The first of these is light in motion, which you can turn on or off. And this is just this uh, red ring here. You can see it's off just at the moment. If you turn that on, it lights up with a nice little sort of LED um, effect there, a red LED effect. It'll look a bit orange on the video, but it's actually quite an intense red in real life. I quite like it actually. Um, it's, you know, it's not, I don't really find it annoying. It kind of goes with the rest of my case, which happens to have evil looking red lights on it as well. But not everyone likes it, so you can turn it off. You can change the sound output, um, well, the volume of the sound output, or mute it. And that's anything connected to the 3.5mm headphone jack. This monitor doesn't have any integrated speakers or anything like that. You can reset everything to the factory defaults with the All Reset option. And there's DisplayPort and HDMI Deep Sleep. And these essentially, they're the settings which allow the monitor to save a bit more power when the monitor's on standby or it's in a low power state. And they're required for certain Energy Star certifications, which is why quite a lot of monitors actually do this by default, so they can claim all sorts of different eco credentials. On this monitor, you can actually enable or disable the feature. Um, there's only really quite a minor difference in power consumption. Um, I haven't measured it myself, but uh, in terms of what I've read, uh, if you disable the feature. And the advantage of disabling it is, is that the monitor will basically spring back to life a bit more quickly. And sometimes people have issues with it. Um, if the computer goes to sleep, people have issues with the monitor not waking up if it's deep sleeping. So it's just a compatibility thing as well. So that's all there is to the menu of the ASUS PG248Q. Hope you enjoyed the video. You can read the full review on pcmonitors.info or also take a look at the video review on our YouTube channel.